We're waiting for quite a few still, I can see. Miss Potter. Uh -oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm looking for my agenda, which I thought I had pulled up, but now I can't find. See, that's why I always print mine. <laughs> <It's just laughs> there. there we go. So we've got five we need six so we had we ever heard of i heard back from rebecca hopper seven yay linda's here okay in yeah okay mm -hmm. okay all right and i'm sorry stephanie can you pronounce your last name again please of oh, your on mute oh you're yeah you're on <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, when I said something back before, none of you could hear me. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sorry. Hagen, Hagen boo, like how are you? Okay. Hagen boo, yeah. Hagen boo, okay. All right. Okay, it looks like we may be ready to begin. All right. So, um, I'm going to, do we have Becky? No, not yet. Becky's not here yet, right. Okay. Oh, come on. Sorry. <laughs> like, wait a minute. This isn't what I thought I had downloaded. Ugh, I apologize. There we go. I downloaded the same thing twice instead of the agenda. Okay. Um, once Becky gets here, I'm going to thank her for her service. Uh, but before we get to that, I'm going to do the roll call uh, as a voice vote. Stephanie, usually we do this just in person, hand up or say aye or whatever. But because we're on video, we have to make it a matter of public record. This is being recorded and broadcast that the board members are here. And okay. uh, so I'm going to call on you just so that you are present, but um, just so you're prepared for that. Okay. okay. Um, Rebecca Beal is not, Becky is not here yet. Okay, Linda Corliss. Present. Uh, Travis said he probably wouldn't, right? Um, okay, Stephanie Hagenboo. Present. Um, Rebecca Hopper is not. Denise Mallet. Here. Lynn Manley. Here. Nancy Newbert. Here. Um, Joanne Potter. I think you're muted, Joanne. <laughs> I can see you, but I can't hear you. It says you're, it says you're muted, you Joanne. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, um, we can see her. Everybody. Yeah, we can see her and she's nodding. And me is Trita Schaefer here. Okay. So we're going to start with the um, public input statement read by the vice chair uh, and then lead into right. public comment if we have any. Okay, 
Uh, the first public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residency opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding ex executive sessions cannot be made during public input, for example, matters involving personnel. Is there any public input? Checking. <laughs> it was live. It was going to be live. Oh, okay. It doesn't look like it. No. Nope. Okay. All right. In that case, um, we are going to move on to the vote. Um, I believe we had a chance to sign things and now we need to actually publicly accept the or not the results of the vote in the towns. Okay. So. Do you just want a, a summary again that the, the budget passed? All four of the questions uh, passed each town. And um, so I will record your um, yes or no vote. Okay. So in that case, we're going to do the roll call again. And um, Stephanie, this time I'm not going to call on you, okay? I am sworn in if that makes a difference now. Oh, you oh. are? It yep. does. Do we need, did it real quick. I mean. <laughs> we need to um, accept, how does this work in terms of the order of things? Do we need to accept the vote before we can swear in or before we can, well. Um, if she is officially sworn in with the town of Lebanon, then she can proceed and then you can Excellent. do um the official seating from there yep okay cool all right then in that case linda corliss yes um stephanie hagan yes your first vote congratulations <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> denise mallet yes lynn manley yes nancy newbert yes joanne potter She's still on mute. Unmute, unmute yourself there. <laughs> it's on the Zoom, Joanne, the Zoom thing, not on, I think it's not your computer, it's on the Zoom app. Where's, where's Charlotte? Also, whoever is the host of the meeting can actually unmute her. I'm not sure who's set up as the host. I think it's Terry. Terry, can you unmute? I'm trying her? to unmute her and it says to ask to unmute, but it doesn't say unmute anywhere. So let me see more. She might yeah. be in the oh, wrong. I just, I, in the wrong I think I just yeah. unmuted her. Joanne can yeah. do something. Oh, I see her. Yeah. Okay, Joanne, maybe we can yeah. hear you now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. And me is through the shape. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, before we move on, I just want to publicly uh, say thank you to all three towns for their um, incredible support of the budget during a, a difficult time. Indeed. That it's, was really much uh, appreciated uh, mm -hmm. and a huge relief. <laughs> May I just take a minute to talk about the SRRF? That sure. was question number four. So that is, um, the, those are the, for the sprinkling, for the sprinklers or installing that for the Hanson School, the Hussey School and North Berwick Elementary School. And that will uh, likely occur in June of 21. And then the asbestos uh, work will begin on Monday at the middle school. Okay, Great. wonderful. Yes. Okay, uh, moving on then to item uh, number four the oath of office for new board members. I don't think there was a motion. Hey guys. Oh, do we need to do a motion on the vote? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, well, I, started, I started with a mistake and I'm gonna end with one. <laughs> I need a motion to adopt the results to approve the adopt. Yes. Can I get a motion to adopt the vote please? I'll make that motion. This is Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Can I get a second? I'll second it. It's Linda. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? I'm assuming not. Okay. 
And then I'll do the roll call again. Um, Linda Corliss. Yes. Stephanie Hagen. Yes. Denise Mallett. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Joanne? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and me is Trita Schaefer, yes. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, number four, oath of office. Denise. Do I just read it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Hold on one second. Um, right, just a minute. We have to just officially um, recognize Stephanie Hagen Boo okay. as, as a new board member, and then we move on to appointing the new chair and vice right. chair. Okay. Do we? We don't need to vote that, do we? We just we, we just recognize it. Say just congratulations. Me. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Stephanie. Thank you, and thanks to everybody who voted for me and everybody support. Look forward to working with you. All right. You know. Over to you, Denise. <laughs> Okay, so I, Denise Mallett, do swear that I will faithfully discharge to the best of my abilities the duties incumbent on me as a regional school unit board director of MS 8060 according to the Constitution of Maine and laws of the state. So help me God. <laughs> welcome, you know welcome into the hot seat. <laughs> And over to you, Denise. Oh, for real, okay. Um, uh, are we appointing a new vice chair? Yes. Okay, so how does that go down? Oh, we have Rebecca Hopper has joined us. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Um, um, so do we need to... So, so I think somebody needs to nominate her and then a right. second. Right. We need so, to we also need to nominate the chair. Do we? So, even though it's assumed that the vice chair will take uh, over, someone needs to nominate to, to be the sorry, chair. guys. That's okay. You're fine. This is all you know, we do this once a year. Right. If we're lucky that we remember it all, that's pretty good. So <laughs> it's all good. So we we'll nominate Denise. I'll <laughs> nominate Denise. This is Nancy. <laughs> Ms. Newbert, thank you. Second. And I would like to nominate Nancy Newbert as the vice chair. And I second. Okay. You ladies need to slow her down and just do one at a time. <laughs> That's okay. what I wondered. <laughs> um, so I just ready, I was ready to be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, you made the motion for Denise to be the chair. Who is who is the second on that motion? I have no idea. No kidding. The street is like ready to roll. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's take a year. So do we need to do a roll call for these? We do, yep. Okay. The street back to you. Yep. Just because it's so much fun. Okay. <laughs> Linda Corliss. Yes. Um, Stephanie Hagen. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallett. Uh, do I vote on that? I, you well, you're, uh, I think, I think you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yeah. Estrita Schaefer. Yes. Okay, yay. Now you can go on to the next one. Okay, and now I would like to nominate Nancy Newbert for vice chair. And I second. All right. I think we need a roll call again. Any, yeah. any discussion or anything? No, no questions? All right. Um, one last time, Linda Corliss. Yes. Stephanie Hagen, boo. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. I, we can't hear you, Rebecca. Yes. Okay. Um, Denise Mallett. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. Astrida Schaefer. Yes. Okay, now I can relax. You are 
You are now a free woman, Mrs. Trina Schaefer. So I'm literally picking well, up on the agenda from here on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, on to the minutes of June 23rd and June 25th. So. So the 23rd. The 23rd was the district budget meeting. And those are the standard. Does that have minutes? It doesn't typically have minutes. It's the 25th that you do. The well, minutes. we do have minutes here of the June 23rd meeting. Yeah, I might have shared them. Yep. I mean, we can definitely vote on them. They are just a uh, just an overview of the that that meeting. I basically take things step by step through the questions, but it was like, yeah. it was a pretty short one. Yeah. So it's a little different. Um, I don't recall, honestly, I don't recall if we've ever approved those minutes before or not, but let's make it official. Okay, so um, any comment, but if on, I'm just looking through them now. I don't, is there any, um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of June 23rd? I'll make that motion. This is Nancy. I'll second. This is Estrita. All right. Any discussion? No. Um, okay. Uh, Linda Corliss. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. I knew there was a meeting I missed, but it was the next one. <laughs> um, Stephanie Hagenboo. Yes. Did I get that right? Um, um, hold on. I didn't write my whole list down. Um, Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And Estrita Schaefer. Yes. And Denise Malamy, yes. And then minutes of the pull those up. The June twenty fifth. Yeah, June twenty fifth. Well, I'll make that motion too, I guess. This is Nancy. We were counting on you, Nancy. <laughs> I always, I already had your name in here. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll second it. That works for me too. Any discussion? No. Nope. All right. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Stephanie Hagenbaugh? Hagenboo? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. And I came in late to that one. Um, oh, actually, so did Lynn, Travis, and Linda. So I think, Linda, you have to be abstain and Lynn. So do we actually have enough? Um, well, the deal is that Travis is the only one missing, and, I and think we also can't have Stephanie's vote on either of those, actually. Okay, so this is Becky Beal. I'm here oh, if you want to count my vote. Yeah. <laughs> my technology is not working. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was at the meeting. <laughs> so where does But that... I'm not a member anymore. <laughs> um... I'm not sure where that leaves us as far as. So I would say that if you were, you did attend the meeting eventually, that you okay. can still approve the minutes based on what you knew. And also to be perfectly honest with you, if you did not attend a meeting, but read everything and feel comfortable with it, you, you don't have to abstain. 
you okay can't. also lynn manley also was there so she and i right. it looks like we're both in the same exactly so okay so if you did show up it's it's perfectly okay to um okay. approve the minutes Denise, okay. so i will also approve then okay Denise, I had been planning to speak to on, on, to Becky. Do you want to do that now in, in your more official role? Just as a thank. Uh, no, you go ahead, because I think you had thought about what you were going to say. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm, I'm sorry you can't see me. I couldn't do it on my laptop. There's no camera on this. OK. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> I'm glad that you could join us, Becky, because we um, really wanted to express our thanks to you for your hard work on behalf of the board. Oh, look at that. See? Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see it. Yes, it's wonderful. <laughs> so um, we, we are just really appreciative of your efforts and your dedication. And good luck to you in your next venture. I know that it means a lot to you. And we appreciate everything you've done for us. It does. Thank you. I really have enjoyed being with you guys and getting to know everybody. and finding out just what a tough job being on the school board is yeah. so um thank you for those kind thoughts all right thank you becky all right i'm gonna go finish making supper <laughs> okay <laughs> okay well <laughs> all right bye. bye thanks um okay so donations to the school nutrition and backpack programs sure we have two donations both from Charles Hatch, Post 79, American Legion, 500 for the school nutrition program and 500 to the backpack program. And uh, to just to date, we have had $3,253 donated to the school nutrition program. Wow. And that does not count the fundraiser with the t-shirts. Wow. That's fantastic. Right. So we do need a motion and an approval of these um, donations. All right. Um, I so move that we approve these donations. I'll second that. All right. Any um, discussion other than a lot of gratitude? <laughs> um, so Becky's gone. OK. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Stephanie Hagenboo? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. Mallet? Yes. Um, okay. Audrey, hey, I apologize. Can you give me the who seconded that one? Who seconded that? Um, I, I did. Here. This is Lynn. Oh, thank you. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Okay. So earlier today, I shared with you a document that was called Information for the Board on the on the Elementary School. Well, it's the ESEA Overview for 2021. Um, do folks have that? Yes. Can they see it? Okay. So every year we receive quite a significant amount of money um, from the federal government for um, Title I, which is for the students who are um, in need, basically free and reduced lunch programming. And then we support them through um, typically reading and math supports within the classrooms. And we also receive Title II money, which is specifically for, for professional development for our staff and administration. And then there are two other funds, Title IV and Title V, which have sort of uh, evolved over the time, <laughs> that we take our Title IV funds and we actually put them into Title I to increase the amount of money that is there for our for our programming for the for the, um, the Title I programming. So I'm just going to go through it quickly with you. Um, it is very very similar to the past. Um, we don't change these um, significantly over time, just because they provide a lot of supports in our classrooms. We use the funding primarily for staff. So they're typically for 
Title I teachers and ed techs to support the classroom for reading and writing and math instruction. Okay, so that is the, the first piece of it. So if you look at the overview, um, it basically says, and this will be attached to the minutes when it for the public when, when it all goes out. So anybody that's listening, it'll be there for you. Um, the Title I-A funding is specific to Lebanon and Berwick. Um, the reason that it's specific to Lebanon and Berwick was that over the years, those were our higher free and reduced lunch counts. In all honesty, everybody is similar now. North Berwick is also considered to be um, eligible for funds, but because we have locally um, evened, you know, equalized the playing field, we're just gonna continue to put the funds in the Berwick Lebanon piece and use the local funds for North Berwick. Every school, all of our elementary schools get the same type of supports in the classrooms. Just want you to be clear about that. It's just where does the money come from? So we have $547,871.37 that's specifically going for those ed techs and Title I folks in the classroom settings. With that also, and we split those evenly between Berwick and Lebanon. Um, we also spend, we have to take 1% of that amount and we have to put that towards parental involvement. So we basically provide evenings and um, supplemental information and also sending books home often to the families to support, you know, having, having parents involved with the, the reading instruction and the math instruction and with their children. Um, the other piece that we do is we have to set aside $2,000 towards our homeless um, population supports. And that $2,000 there is specifically to support the coordination of all of the transportation that we provide, making sure that the tutorings are, are in place if necessary, just all of the sort of the administrative duties that, that pop up um, when we're dealing with the um, the other, other schools that we're working with actually for, for, with our homeless population. So that's the total package for those folks. Does anybody have any questions about that? It's kind of a quick overview. And, the, and within obviously the narrative, there's, it, it's a little more specific as to the supports that we provide. If we go down to Title II, Title IIA, which is Professional Development for Staff and Administration, um, we received $100,936.39, we'll be receiving that. Um, we've, we've not, this is very similar to what we did last year. We took um, $7,200 and, and it's a basically professional development for utilizing the STAR program that we have, the STAR assessment. So those are our district sort of benchmark assessments that we use throughout the school year. And those, those run kindergarten, well, not kindergarten, it's uh, second grade through 10th uh, grade, basically, so that we have a benchmark throughout the year for that. And then, and that person, there's one person that receives that stipend, but she does a ton of work to go through all of the assessments and make sure that everybody is up to speed. Um, there's two or three different windows of opportunity where all of our students have to be tested. It's a bit of work, let's put it that way. Um, the literacy coach for the middle school, we've, we've funded through the Title II funds for the past few years. It's a positive um, you know, support system for the middle school. And she basically is working not only with students, but she actually provides direct instruction to staff on how to improve literacy practices in their building, which is great. Uh, the other piece that we have a small amount that we set aside, we teach um, a particular professional uh, literacy course in Lebanon. Um, so she, it's Sue Huff does the, does the work for us. And it's a mandate, we, they developed a mandated course basically for new teachers in literacy instruction and Sue teaches it. So it's, it's been a very um, beneficial piece for our new staff. And we're kind of going to duplicate that in other buildings. But I just, honestly, I had a little bit left over between that funding. So I took it out of, instead of a, um, in our regular funds, I put it into the, into the, the title funds just, to, just to, to finish that little piece up. And the last piece we have is what is called Title V. And we use that funding specifically for um, 
basically half of Erin Dixon, who is our part-time health coordinator. And we've done that for several years. So she's been, that's part where her, she's grant funded for at least half of her pay. And that's, again, uh, this is not anything real new, but we, last year we had um, about 704, well, $727,000. This year we only have $667,000. The funding has been consistently dropping. Part of that is because our free and reduced numbers are dropping. Um, and everything that is sent our way is based on those numbers. So, does anybody have any questions about that? Are they, are they dropping because of lack of proper reporting on behalf of the families, essentially? Uh, it's a combination, Estrita. I think the um, part of it is that people do struggle with identifying the need for free and reduced lunch. That that I mean, that's something that's been sort of time immemorial, right? Immemorial. We've always people struggle with that whole idea. Mm -hmm. Although there is no easy way to identify if a student is free and reduced now because everything is electronic, and so that's all easy. Um, there's still a stigma that's attached to it, whether we like it or not, which, is, and so we're working on that because the, the more students who are identified, actually and truly identified for free and reduced means it's actually increases the funding for the school system. So we do, we work really hard to increase those numbers and get to the accurate, the accurate numbers. Um, it, but for our nutrition, you know, school nutrition program relies on it. The whole, it's, it's a, it's a big deal and we need to keep pushing it and help people understand that it's a benefit that they deserve. If mm -hmm. they need it, we should help them. The other part is minimum wage has gone up. And when minimum wage goes up, it's not that folks are necessarily making all that much more money, but it is sometimes enough to tip them off the scale so that they don't qualify anymore. Okay. So they, their, their income rises just enough to make that benefit go away. And so that's, that's the piece of the struggle. That's all. So, so that's where we're at with that. Uh, so if there are any other questions, then I just, I ask for a approval for the application process. So can somebody make a motion to accept? So we're accepting the application process. Well, just the app, this is the amount that we're going to be requesting and for these reasons. So basically it's you're approving the application. Okay. okay. So we're, yeah, we're looking for a motion to approve the elementary and secondary education um, application. That's it. I move to accept it. <laughs> I second it. Any other questions or discussion? Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Stephanie Hagenboo? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Was that a yes? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. And me, Denise Mallet? Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, we are eagerly awaiting an update on the opening of school for the <laughs> 2020. <laughs> so just a quick kind of summary. We, uh, at the, earlier today, we talked about the guiding beliefs document that the um, administrative team worked on last week um, and, and prior to a little bit, just as our guiding document as we start looking at uh, looking at the different scenarios for the fall. So that's one thing to update you. Also, um, just talking a little bit about the task force. Our task force is working in conjunction with the um, school administration and departments, the different departments, as we work through, uh, again, some of the different scenarios that, that we're looking at. We have a lot of subcommittees that are under the task force, such as facilities, schedule, curriculum. Those committees are meeting to develop um, 
the consistency, no matter how we come back, just working through some of those pieces of consistency and equity, equity for our students and our buildings. Uh, let's see, we have completed the staff survey. And as I look at it, it looks right now that um, based on the two questions that we had, one question, the first question being, would you be able to come back to work um, as, as we deem safe and appropriate? And the other question was um, that you would, you would need some reasonable accommodations and, and are unable to come back in the, maybe in the capacity that we will have, have as an option. So 92% um, of our staff at this point in time said that they would be able to return to, to work. Uh, so that's that piece. We have um, the parent and family survey that just went out yesterday and it is expected to come to close on Monday. And we have about a thousand responses thus far. And we're going to send another uh, reminder out on Sunday night just to make sure that we get some um, more families filling out the survey. We're pulling some information right now. So again, there's about a thousand uh, responses, right. which as Sue mentioned, it, most families have more than one child. So that's a pretty good representation. Um, this morning when I looked at it, there were a lot of high responses from the high school, from families at the high school level. Right. Um, so, so for instance, like we, we can, we can kind of play with the data. Currently at, there's 944 responses. Of those, 329 are saying they will not send their kids back if it's full time in school. Um, and then there's the question of will they come back if it's hybrid? So we're working on trying to like break down the numbers to figure out. There's there are definitely families out there that are not interested right now in sending their kids back to school in any fashion, except for potentially remote. So a lot of that will guide our um, planning for coming back to school in September and because the numbers are key. The other part that's key obviously is the transportation piece and so it currently as again as we were looking at this uh, over half of our responses have said that they could provide transportation themselves. That's huge for us as we plan because when Brenda was figuring out the uh, the, like how many kids could we transport in uh, like a run, you know, a, a morning run, the, like the maximum would be 760 students on one run. So we have two tiers, right? So it's a maximum of 1400 kids. That's half of our district. That's not enough, right? For what, but if we have parents that are able to step up and consistently able to step up, then we might be able to make things work. You know, so all of these are playing into these scenarios um, and it's, it's really just, it's like this exercise in futility in some ways, but we're going to figure it out as best we can. Right. What are they looking at for capacity of the school buses? Like what percentage? Um, so they're looking at with masks, kids seated every other, like every seat, but sort of yeah according to each other Fair, so it's yeah. up to 28 at that point that's the maximum they're thinking about and normally it's twice that uh 57 passengers normally you know 70 they call them 72 passenger buses but if you think about the size of some of our older students you know three to a seat is tight right but for our elementary kiddos they have more kids on those buses for sure yeah right so by the by this week, hopefully by the end of this week, Governor Mills and Commissioner Macon will give us some more guidelines. Uh, we've been waiting for those uh, as well because they will really help us right now looking at the CDC um, information. It says desks six feet, you know, for social distancing purposes, uh, students are six feet apart. Uh, so we're waiting to see if there are any updates on some of those more health related pieces because that will drive some of our decisions about what we're able to do in a classroom setting and what we're aren't we what we aren't able to do. Uh, so what we would 
what we're hearing from other communities around us is that they are hoping to be able to bring their three plans to their boards uh, the first part of August. So that that's ba that's our goal too. We would really like to be able to do so, but we really um, we need to have a meeting to do that. Uh, I know in the summer sometimes there aren't meetings, but this is really uh, an important thing that we should we should be able to discuss. I think. Definitely. Okay. All right. So those are our updates for for that at this point in time. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, board committee update. I'm actually not 100% sure what this is referring to. Ugh. Sure. Uh, we do have some board members that are attending uh, or on serving on committees. And we just, we, uh, we think that the policy subcommittee is going to need to meet somewhat quickly, uh, just due to some of the Title IX information that we just heard, and we may need to revise or put in some things to our policies. So I have a list of those committees, and I just didn't know if we could go through for those of you who are here and just see if you would still like to serve on those committees or if somebody else would like to do so. Um, so Can we just sign Travis up for all the committees? <laughs> That's mean. Okay, I'm gonna put that in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so for the policy subcommittee, I have Joanne and Estrita. Is that still okay for you, Joanne? It, it is unless someone else would be interested in, in having a turn at it. But I'm not my seat if someone else would like. Okay. Are we, um, have we typically had two board members per, per committee? Varies. Combination. Some of them have been more than two. Right. The construction committee uh, is, there's more. I think there's three. There's so two. I, would, I would just say to Stephanie, if I assume if any of these sound of particular interest to you, um, definitely speak up. Aud if, if I may, Audra, could you read off the overall list of available committees yeah. so Stephanie has a sense of what's yeah, sure. idea. Thank you. Thanks. So we have the policy subcommittee negotiations, and I believe there are two um, rounds of negotiations. I believe the teacher negotiations and school administration. Facilities and finance committee, and that also has three members, uh, one from each town. And then the construction committee, again, has three members, one from, not it's one. Two. It's just me and Travis, okay. I think. Okay. And the other thing, like Joanne, if you, if somebody was interested in a committee, but feeling a little nervous about it, it could be something that you could, we could put three people on the sub, the policy subcommittee meeting so that you could, you know, gradual yeah. release, you know? Yeah, that's great. I think that's a good idea. So you can talk about that. <clears throat> okay. So policy negotiating. Um, teachers and admin, facilities and finance, and construction, and those are all of them? Right, correct. We also had a code of conduct committee. Are we, is that now, is that gone or? Is nope. that not part of the policy? That's not part of the policy committee? It's not, it, it was actually um, something that we just kind of met once or twice a year to just review and see how things were going. So we can, we can certainly continue that. Maybe I email. Yeah. How about I email the list of committees and if you want to sign up? Yeah, so you can think about it a little right. bit. So I just I do have a question though, and I've I've always struggled. I would like very much to I'd actually like to be on the facility and finance committee or just be an extra person. But my issue has always been that it seems like the committees tend to meet during the day. And and I'm just wondering if there if there are any that if that's still the case, um, or if there are any that have been meeting more sort of after hours. Sure, so I, I believe that the negotiations one meets after school. And- Yeah, it was, I tried that and it was still during the day and I oh, failed. Okay. <laughs> the, um, the facilities and finance actually 
we typically do after um, three o'clock, but it has been like a three fifteen kind of thing, three thirty, right, Joanne? That was the we typically get on right after, right after kind of the end right. of the the yeah. school day. Right. Um, I'll, I'll just wait for the updates. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's ways to adjust things too. Right. So you know, we live in this now this new land of virtual. So there are things that people can attend, whether they can physically get there or not. True. All right, so we'll just send an email out um, with the committees and you can sign up if you are interested. With a special note that the policy one probably needs to get going sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yes. And, and with that said, I am very content to remain on the policy committee. Um, okay. And we can, and, and my schedule is pretty open. <laughs> um, museums are closed, nobody needs what I do. So um, I'm pretty available in terms Thanks. of scheduling something soon. Okay. All right. Um, moving on, employment, new hires, retirement. Sure. So I'll do title first. We're gonna. We will start with the new hires, and we're just going to update you on um, those new hires. So we have Morgan Janke Early, who will be working uh, third grade at Hanson. She is just finishing her ETEP. Uh, work and she did some interning and long-term subbing in Portland. We have Amanda Rule who is going to teach math at the high school, 11th grade and some multiple pathways work. She graduated from St. Joseph's College. She's coming back to Maine from uh, working in Rhode Island as a math teacher there. We have Amy Sampson who will be working as the Hussey School Building Title I coordinator. Uh, she is most recently, or was most recently, a literacy specialist in RSU 57. We have Michelle Spiller, who is going to be teaching eighth grade English. And those are our hires. And then our, you need to accept our resignations. So I will uh, go through those right now. And these, you, as I said, you need to accept. So. Um, we have Kristen Howes, who was um, a counselor or is a counselor at Noble High School. And she is um, just in her letter of resignation, just said due to some family needs, she is resigning her position. We have um, Jessica Miller, who is a high school math teacher, and she is moving on to work outside of the education field. We have Katie Brown or Catherine Brown, who is moving down, I think, to Massachusetts to a school that she had some done some work with in her in, in, while she was in school. And we have Roisin McGuckin, McGuckin, and she is most recently was most recently at Hanson School, and she is going to Sanford uh, to teach in Sanford. And then we have Tyler Windsor, who is our current um, assistant principal at Noble High School. And he uh, is actually here and wanted to be here to talk to you himself. So uh, if, if you don't mind, Tyler, uh, could you unmute Tyler and just let them hear your, um, your resignation? Hello. There you Hi, are. everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, so I have a, an opportunity to relocate to um, Hawaii um, with my partner who has a, her dream job. Um, and it was an opportunity that came quickly, um, despite, despite some major um, conflicting feelings, um, given the, the amazing job that everyone at Noble does. And um, our current situation with our crisis, health crisis, um, but it's a decision that I've made for, for myself, and um, I am just honored to have been a part of such a special district, and for um, you know, everyone from the board to the ed techs here to, to see all the care that you give all the students, both, both educationally and holistically, will um, always stay with me. So I, I can't thank you all enough for, for welcoming me to, to this district and for all that you've taught me. 
Thank you. Uh, I would like to say that you've been, um, you know, very great to work with from day one. And um, I have always been impressed with the poise which with, with which you carried yourself through a lot of um, a variety of circumstances. And, uh, you know, word on the noble street is that the, the kids are fond of you too. So, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and that's all that really matters. So <laughs> thank you for the amazing job that you did and wish that we could have you around longer. Mm -hmm, for sure. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, and, and especially at that age group, I think Tyler's a quiet superhero to deal with 13 yeah. and 14 year olds and helping them feel like they belong at the high school and they count in that staff. We always talk about other people in other age groups. And I, I think Tyler has done an amazing job, and, and I think we realize it, and I think people in the know, especially the kids, know that. Um, but he's a tough replacement, and he's done one heck of a job for our kids in the district, So, um, and the transitions as well. So we thank you, Tyler. Well done. Yeah, agreed. Mm, it's unfortunate. Do we get to hear what the dream job is? <laughs> uh, sh she's uh, getting a postdoctorate with uh, one of the – leading researchers are in her field, which is um, ocean chemistry. So while I'm dealing with some student discipline, she's often scuba diving in coral reefs. So <laughs> quite an excellent position. Wow. An oceanography school. You got a perfect combination there. Yeah. That's right. Good, good point. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good luck to you. So, Audra, was that all of them? That's yes. all of them, yes. Okay, so can we get a motion to accept the resignations, right? Not the hires. Right. Right. The resignations. Uh, I move with regret to accept the res resignations. Thank you. For tonight. Second. I'll second. Okay. Um, all right, um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Stephanie Hagenboo? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Oh, yeah. Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. And me, Denise Mallet? Yes. Um, do we have any other tonight? We do. We have about, we have three things. Uh, oh, so others. We'll go first with the first one. So this is kind of, um, I feel like, I almost feel like a Joe Bornstein commercial. <laughs> so we have been asked to um, consider joining a lawsuit brought about by state and local governments against some of the pharmaceutical companies as a result of the opioid crisis. Um, they basically, Drummond Woodson has been contacted by the national law firm leading the litigation to invite us to include their Maine and New Hampshire clients to the lawsuit. This does not cost the district anything. Um, participation, they basically say, it, put it this way, participation with the, in the litigation will be at no cost to the plaintiff's school districts. Um, the national law firms are fronting all the costs and all the legal will come out if there's any amount recovered. Um, it's a, it's a sh the time necessary to complete the work is minimal. So that's, that was a big kind of piece for us is what are we doing and why are we doing it? And how much is it gonna take our, of our time? It's very brief in terms of, you know, we just have to speak with some of the council and we need to fill out uh, some simple forms. And the, at this point, the amount of any recovery is unknown but they're assuming that likely over a period of years, we'll have some funding to support our special education budgets because the, the opioid crisis primarily has hit our special education population and increased that. So we kind of said, there's no harm, no foul here for us and we might as well participate. So, but, but we do need the board to say that you would like us to move forward with it. And I apologize, my internet is sort of freezing a little bit, but um, did you say, is there, uh, there's no downside? 
uh, it does not appear that there's any downside. The it look at this point, everything says that we will have no cost to us in terms of any of the litigation pieces of it. It's only it would just be a benefit in terms of recovery, because basically these are these things are taken on with the hope that they're gonna kind of hit it big, and the law firms will take their cut from there, <laughs> and then the rest of us will get whatever we get. Um, and our legal counsel is supportive. Of yeah, Drummond is the one who actually reached out to us to let us know about it. Yeah. So, so can you back up a little bit? The sure. who is suing the pharmaceuticals, and what exactly? What is the I so, mean, sort of language? Can you send you any language or anything that? I don't have the best of the language, but basically, what they're saying is there are claims. Um, if you, if you have seen it in the papers, there are lawsuits that have been brought about by state and local governments against the pharmaceutical company. So now we've been made aware that similar claims are being asserted on behalf of public schools. And so basically this, this na nationwide sort of movement has now come to Maine. And Maine has been, um, Drummond Woodson has been contacted by these bigger firms to say do you want your main clients and your New Hampshire clients to get on board with this. And they're saying, sure, it makes perfect sense. Um, because we are, we're incurring much more costs regarding those kiddos coming in with higher needs. And, and we've talked about this um, actually quite a bit, you know, in terms of the trauma piece and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I just wonder yeah. if you had any, like, exactly what the wording was or nope. anything. I, I mean, I do. There is a resolution. Um, but I, I apologize that we didn't get this to you ahead of time, but we actually just got this right before the meeting. Um, I'll read it to you. How's that? Okay. Or um, you can just give me the abridged version. I would, <laughs> you I don't know that I can because I'd have to read it before I read it. How's that? Um, it's basically, it, it authorizes us to, um, I'm just trying to think of how to do this easily. It directs the, the superintendent of schools and the administrative staff to cooperate with the appointed attorneys. The, the appointed attorneys are, there's five of them and one of them is Drummond Woodson. Um, one, two, yeah. And that um, will expend no funds for its participation in the litigation. And we elect to file claims in this um, basically um, class action lawsuit in order to recoup damages inflicted by the opioid epidemic. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. Right. It's kind of sufficiently vague to co cover just about anything. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's it is pretty vague actually. It's like this whole we're going to get some support because of the manufacture, distribution and marketing of opioid drugs and how it's resulted in catastrophic widespread consequences for the people of this nation. Yeah. So it's pretty big. Yeah, but I think that the more, like, I think the way the class actions work is the more you have on board the, the sort of the, the more um, solidified the cases. Like right. If well, it, probably the, the, the settlement the impact that it had on us, and, um, you know, it may mean less money in the if they win it, but I think most people are probably not in it for that reason. Right. It's it's definitely more of a moral compass going on right now. So, uh, I apologize for the sort of murkiness of it, but I see no downside. I see only up. And if you're interested, we just need to have somebody make a motion that I would say basically that they will be supporting the um, participation in the class action suit. And then I'll put all the language in for you. My inclination is to support it if it doesn't end up, um, you know, being a huge time sink for you guys. Um, but I guess we don't know that at this point. Well, so. they, do, they do resolve that this will not, that it will be minimal um, effort on our part. So. Minimal effort and time and minimal 
Ex and no expenses. It's what it says. This is Joanne. I want to make a motion to proceed with the uh, um, water. Thank you. Second. I'll second. Um, any other questions or discussion? No. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Stephanie Hagenbu? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. And me, Denise Mallet. Yes. Thank you. All right. And other, another other? Yes. So the second of the three is uh, we just have to review the agreement with Sanford for the um, technical center. And um, Denise will need to sign it as the chair of the board. Uh, but so basically we get this annual agreement every year. It just came in. It was, uh, that's why it's under other business. So we send um, about 113 students, which is the second highest number of students to Sanford for their technical center, which is, and that is about 30% of the student body that attends. We typically, we, our payment for this year is for a, a little over $40,000. Um, so this is a long standing agreement that we have, but again, it just, it came in and we just needed to have you make a motion to accept if you do, and then Denise will need to sign it. Is that something I can do electronically or should I come in? I think, I think Jen can do it for you electronically, but we'll let you know if it's a problem. Yeah. Um, somebody want to make a motion to accept the payment? It's the payment to Sanford Technical. Yes. Nancy, I'll make that in. motion. <laughs> okay. Second. And I'll second, second it, it's Linda. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, Linda Corliss? Yes. Stephanie Hagenbu? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Ann Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. Alec, yes. All right. Okay, the last one. Uh, Steve has a credit card through Gorham Savings Bank, uh, and we need to get that changed to have it be in my name. And um, what it is, is that credit card serves for um, companies. We use it when we have companies that don't, um, you have POs that don't allow us to use purchase orders. And so we're requesting or asking for your approval for that that to go from Steve's name to my name and also to um, allow for another card for Sue. Um, both of those credit limits would be $15,000. I've never had one before and I'm perfectly okay without it, except that they, um, with this PPE stuff, um, we actually need a higher credit limit than we've had. The $15,000 is, is, has been sufficient, but there's concern going forward that we're not going to be able to purchase what we need um, upfront. And so that's why they asked about doing another one in my name. So just so you know, and it doesn't leave our offices. We don't take them with us. They don't go anywhere. Denise is in charge, not me. <laughs> um, can we get a motion to uh, have one credit card switched from Steve to Audra and then have a new credit card set up for Sue. This is Joanne, I'll make that motion. Second. Um, all right, Linda Corliss. Approve, yes. Stephanie Hagenbu. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Uh, Joanne Potter. Yes. Estrita Schaefer. Yes. And me, Denise Mallet. Yes. 
And I know that was your third other, but I I um, would like to just touch base and see what um, I agree with Audra that I think we need to schedule. We have to have some meetings on the calendar. Um, even if people are away and we don't have everyone, I think there's too much that's going on at the speed of light right now. So um, just wanted to see what you were thinking. Or I guess, Audra, like looking at your time frame, what do you think would be um, like the next time you would need to have us convene? I think if we could meet that first week in August. So the 6th? So like, like the 6th? The 6th. Yes, the 6th, if that works out. That will give us time to go through the surveys and hopefully hear an update from um, Governor Mills and Commissioner Macon and continue to refine what we're working on right now. And would that be uh, the only meeting in August or will we do another one or? Uh, My guess is like that we're, we're gonna have to do another one. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. We wanna so, have uh, should, we, should we say, let's put it on the calendar for August 6th and 20th? for now and then if we need to change that yeah that should that should be okay is the time going to be six or seven six thursday august 6th and oh. thursday august 20th yeah but what time oh, seven, oh i'm sorry seven o'clock or i don't know it doesn't matter do do people have a preference? Do, I mean, we always did seven until this one, but I think that was because of the the retreat. Seven probably would be easier for most people. I'm guessing just because of work. And um, should we plan on trying to do that in person? Please, 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 let's do it in person. <laughs> That's I, I'm, I like to do it in person. I'm going to be out of town that week and I was, I need to zoom in or whatever, but I'll just, you know, I can just be on Audra's phone too as well. So whatever works. Also, I, I, I think I asked this before and I was told that it was not an option and I can't believe this. So I'm going to ask again, but um, if we do have it in person, there, there has got to be a way that some people can dial in. And I, I don't know what that is or what it looks like, but even if it's just, you know, audio, um, there's gotta be a way to make that work. Yes, we can work on that. If we're asking our student body to think about stuff like that, yeah. surely as a board, we can figure it out. <laughs> right. we'll disagree. Yep. right, we will work on that. So um, August 6th at 7 p.m. in person in the library, is that, where we would like, okay. And then August 20th at 7 p.m. in the library. That sounds good. Okay. Is there any the option to call in depending on how things go? Yes, yes. Exactly. I mean, I think, we should, I think we should explore that no matter what. And, um, you know, that may be something that we have that option. I don't know, it's, it's good to know if we can do it. Yes. Agreed. So the August 6th meeting is in person? Yes, right now, yes, yeah. Okay, and I know that the county, we've been holding in-person meetings for the commissioners, but the public calls in. Right. I'm not quite sure how that's done, but it's done on Zoom. I can find out from our IT and, and, and Sue and Audra send you an email. That would be, that'd great. be awesome. Well, well we've been doing that for a couple of months now to make sure the public can at least call in and they're part of the meeting. Okay. They just can't be present. Okay. That sounds great. That does. We can do that. I like it. Um, okay. If that's it for others, is there any other public input? There is. Let me see if I can play this. Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. Um, this is from Gloria Mason in Berwick. Let me see if we can hear it. Hold on. Hi, this is Gloria Mason from Berwick, and I have a question um, 
for the school board. President Trump did say, I believe, that he was going to cut out federal funding for school districts that do not have 100% of the students in the classroom. Um, my question is, how much does our district get from the federal government? Or is the money from the federal government sent to the state and included in the amounts they give us? Thank you. Goodbye. Sue, you gave me a really good overview the other day, which will probably answer her question. Um, so, so the question was, if you didn't hear it out there in the land was, um, President Trump had stated that he was going to cut federal funds to any school system that didn't do 100% return to school. And she wanted to know if that was A, what that meant for us financially, and um, if it comes directly to us or if it goes through the state. So the federal funds that we have are our Title I funds, the, the information that you guys approved tonight, which is about, what did I say, $647,000, as well as local entitlement, which is a special education support system, and that's around, oh gosh, $700,000. So that, those funds do go directly to the state of Maine, and they're issued to the local districts through the state of Maine. Um, so I'm, I don't really wanna make a statement necessarily about how I feel about whether or not this is um, possible. Um, I don't believe that we're in danger, is what I'm gonna say that I think that the, the state has to be the one who provides the funds from the federal government to the state and local chapters, if that makes sense. But it is um, 1.3-ish million dollars. So anything is possible, but as of now, you're not, you think that we're okay? As of now, I feel like we're in, yes, I feel like we're okay. And actually, I have a uh, sorry uh, follow up question. Um, what as that is my dog, and I can't mute while I'm talking. <laughs> um, I understand. What that. time? Like, if we just did our budget, the state just did their budget. I'm really sorry. How um, how does that money? What's the cash flow like for that money? Like, is it at what point is that paying? Does that pay out? In terms of, are you concerned about the, the fact that the economy is struggling based no, on- No, no, I'm more curious, like if for some reason that money was cut off, yep. would that affect this budget year? Would that, like, did we already, have we already received funds? Like, how does that- um... The application that you tonight goes in for August 1st, and we can receive our funds anytime you know, basically throughout this coming year. So it's a 2021 funding. But theoretically, that would be the money that could potentially not show up. That would be the targeted funds, I think, that, that he is talking about. Yep. And, and so I, the majority of the money that we get from the federal government is going towards special ed of, or, or a compromised, um, compromise, that's not the right word, but of um, it's, it's for, a population of our students that, really needs it. Right. It's, it's direct instruction for students um, who basically, um, well, the interesting, it's, it's hard to explain, but Title I funds are not used specifically for free and reduced necessarily. They're used though to support kids who struggle with their reading and their writing and their math. So it, it, it cuts across all um, economics, basically. But the funding, is what's provided is based on your free and reduced numbers. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so I don't have a good, I don't have the good solid, we're not going to have any problems, but I feel strongly that the support is there to continue the Title I funding and the special education funding at the federal level as well as the state level. I right. think any we have to worry more questions? about is the state going to send us all the money they said they would. Yeah, I, yeah, and currently the the state is um, confident that this fiscal budget, this this year, this twenty one budget, is solid. Beyond that, we don't know because the impact from taxes and stuff is really 
it's another, it's kind of that, it's, it's a wave ahead of us that we have to think well, about. They don't, they don't think they're going to do a curtailment this, this school year? They're, they, the curtailment has been brought up, but it has not, not in a way that says it's going to definitely happen. It's very, it's been, it's everybody, everybody worries about it, Nancy, because of the, mm -hmm. of the taxes and the fact that folks are, you know, haven't been working, so not necessarily yeah. paying and that the economy, we're not selling as much stuff, so sales tax is down. Um, but currently, the state is still, the last time I heard numbers, which was not that long ago, maybe a week ago, the numbers were still on target right now to meet our budget. So that is subject to change, obviously. All right. There we go. Keep, keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, for all of it. Is there any other, was there any other public input? That was the only thing that came through for us. Okay. Um, so I guess we just need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was the motion. <laughs> the dog made the motion. <laughs> the, uh, makes the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Who made the motion? Well, I said my dog, but um, <laughs> did, some, did a real person make it? I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> You haven't made motions in so long. You're just making them like crazy. Today. I am. <laughs> I'll second it. This is Nancy. Thank you. All right. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yep. Um, Stephanie Hagenboo? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yep. Uh, Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. And me, Denise Mallet. All right. Thank, Thank you. Me. And we'll see you on the 6th if nothing comes up before then. Sounds good. And, and uh, like I said, if you hey, need to I'll just first, policy. Yeah. Let it yeah. Um, I'll, actually, I know we're done, but I did want to say thank you to Estrita for stepping up last year and jumping into the fray head first and doing a fabulous job. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. All right. Let's Good hope night. this is a smoother sailing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Joanne. <laughs>